For this lesson, we'll be going over the second order response, which would include the second order model, dampening, dampening ratio, and the quality factor. Also, I'll be referring to some equations and some factors that will be in your FE reference handbook. A common model seen in control systems would be your second order model. The first equation you see here, which is taken right out of the FE handbook, displays the second order model. And also it shows the numerator with your steady state gain, as well as your undamped natural frequency. It shows your roots or poles, which is your denominator. Also displayed with it would be also your dampening ratio, which we'll get into more in the next slide. Okay, so what is dampening ratio? Well, let's understand dampening. Dampening is the gradual reduction of repetitive signal due to the resistive losses. So think of, it of dropping a pebble in a pond. When you drop that pebble, you have waves initially, and then over time, it will gradually smooth out and level out that water. Okay, so when referring to the control systems, dampening is commonly calculated through dampening ratio. So the dampening ratio is expressed by utilizing actual dampening in reference to critical dampening. Now critical dampening is when zeta, uh, Greek for Z, is equal to one. And that's what you ideally want. You want the critical dampening. And we'll go over this more in later slides. So we touch base what damping is in reference to throwing a pebble in a pond. Now let's try to understand dampening ratio. Damping ratio has four different states, underdamped, critical damped, overdamped, and undamped. Now the three we're gonna mostly focus on are the underdamped, critical damped, and overdamped. Red, green, blue. Underdamped is when you drop that pebble in the pond, there's excessive amount of waves. It takes a little longer to level off. And that's when zeta is less than one, greater than zero. We have critical damped, which is green. That's more of your ideal design. That's when you drop the pebble in the pond and it starts leveling out almost instantaneously. It's, it's a nice, perfect wave. And then we have overdamped. That's when you drop the pebble in the pond, it's almost dropping uh, into concrete. That's if you have a bandwidth of a thousand hertz, you just narrowed it down even further just because you cut off more than you're supposed to. And then undamped is when zeta equals zero. That's when the waves basically go on forever and it doesn't actually steady off. Now, a very common entity seen with second order models would be your quality factor. The quality factor is the ratio of energy stored to energy lost in a component. Again, this is very rare. You might actually have to calculate this. However, I want to present it to you. That way you're aware of its existence and how to calculate it. Now, obviously, when you have a high quality factor, that's a great thing. That means it's high in quality. Low quality factor is a bad thing. So when you look at your second order model, if you look at the equation to the right, that's how you would see your quality factor. It's actually your natural frequency over quality factor. And then I have the equations at the bottom, how to calculate it in reference to zeta or your bandwidth or even your alpha. And we'll go over that more in the examples next. All right, so let's jump right into our first example. I have a transfer function right here, and I need to identify the second order model and its roots, determine the dampening ratio, and determine the Q factor. Well, the first thing I need to do is take this model and make it into the second order model. Okay. Well, it's first things first. Let's go ahead and simplify it down. So let's just say I have, let's bring the second order model down here. We'll just say 10K over 10, then S plus 10, then S plus 100. Excuse my handwriting as usual. Now, the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and simplify this down right here. So 10K over 10, we're just going to take one zero away. So it's going to be 1K over S plus 10 and then S plus 100. Now our second order model is gonna look something like that. So all we have to do is just multiply these two together and it should actually mimic that guy right there. So it's gonna be 1K, because I'm not gonna to touch the numerator. And then it's S times S, S square, S times 100, so S 100 plus, then 10 times S, S10, and then 10 times 100 gives us plus 1,000. Okay, and we could simplify this down one more time. 1K over S squared. We add the 100S and 10S, and that's going to give us plus 110S plus 1,000. So that one's actually pretty simple. So that right there, that's our model. And as we talked about in the PowerPoint, the denominator would be considered your roots. This whole denominator right here, that's your roots. 
go ahead and clean this up and move this around so that way it's easier to see and we'll move on to the next part. So I cleaned everything up and moved it around. So step one is complete. There's our roots and that's our second order model, which it does mimic that guy right there. Well, now we need to find our dampening ratio, which is this guy right here. Well, in that one spot, we have 110. So, so it's going to be 110 equals 2 times zeta and the natural frequency. By the way, this is Z because I cannot do the Greek Z to save my life. So I'm just going to use Z for this particular one. So when you see me do this, it means this guy. Sorry, I can't do it. I tried. Okay. So let's go ahead and work this down. We're looking for this guy. So we could take 110 divided by 2, and that'll give us 55 equals dampening ratio times your natural frequency, and then find our natural frequency. Well, if you look at the equation, this guy right here and this guy are both your natural frequency square. So both of them equal 1,000. So if you want to find your natural frequency, it's going to be the square root of 1,000. You see how I got that? Because this guy right here is natural frequency square. So all I'm going to do is take the square root to find it. So the square root of 1,000 equals 31.62. So now we know this guy right there. So it's going to be 55 equals zeta times 31.62. And we'll divide both sides by 31.62. And that's going to give us a zeta of 1.74. So that right there is our dampening ratio. 1.74. Now, the trick about finding this is how to manipulate your equations and how to understand it. Once you have your second order model, you can usually manipulate any way you can to find, like, for example, your damping ratio and your natural frequency. Okay, step three. Let's determine our Q factor. This one should be a little easier. So let me clean this up. Well, Q factor is actually really easy. We have Q factor right here. So Q factor equals Q equals 1 over 2 times your damping ratio, which in this case is 1.74. So that's just a simple plug and chug equation right there, which comes out to be 0 0.287, and that's your Q factor. Remember, in the PowerPoint, we actually had the equation set up like this for your Q factor, which is natural frequency over Q. And then, so if you see right here, we have 2 zeta times natural frequency. That's how can we came up with this equation, because 2 times zeta, 2 times zeta, and that's going to be the reciprocal, which is your Q factor. So that's how we went from this equation to this equation, and then this guy. So your Q factor is 0 0.287. The trick here is to have these equations handy as well as understand your second order model. If you know how to manipulate your second order model, you can be pretty quick and successful. All right, let's do another problem. All right, next example. This one, I actually decided to have a little more fun with this one. That way you get an idea of what it's going to look like in a Bode plot as well as try to find out what transfer function goes to what Bode plot. Use the same transfer function from the previous example, and we already determined the dampening ratio. Now, let's try to find out which Bode plot goes to this particular transfer function. Okay, so now that we have a damping ratio, you can kind of get an idea of just what the Bode plot's going to look like just based off the damping ratio. Now, referring to the slides, we went over kind of how the plot's going to look based on the ratio. Now, this damping ratio is greater than 1, which means it's slightly overdamped. It's close to critical, but it's slightly, it's slightly over critical and it's overdamped. So which means you won't have that ripple or that notch you see right there. But let's go ahead and see if we can get a good confirmation. Here. Four Bode plots, A, B, C, D, and we have to find out which transfer function goes to what Bode plot. So you have three that are wrong, one that's right. All right, so the first one, so it has a gain of 20 and then slopes down very smoothly. B, like we talked about, has that nice little ripple and then slopes down. C seems to have a very awkward slope. In fact, it seems to be very narrow and very rough when sloping downward. Very crude and also has a starting gain of 0. D has a very smooth transition as well, similar to A, but it has a starting gain of 0. A few curveballs here, but let's go ahead and see if we can attack it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is 
let's go ahead and identify which one it's not. Well, as we talked about, this is not overdamped. This is close to critical, and actually it's overdamped. So we know it's not this guy right here. When we look in the diagram from the PowerPoints and some of your textbooks, this is considered underdamped, which means your damping ratio is less than 1. Well, so now we know it's A, D, or C. Well, we have two of them that have different starting gains. So let's see if we can find that. So I'm going to refer back to our old frequency response lesson and see if we can find our starting gain, which is going to be, let's go ahead and simplify this equation a little bit. So it's going to be 10K over 10 plus S plus 10 times S plus 100. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I'm going to do over 100, over 100, over 10, over 10, and then I'm going to bring it out. So this is, I'm just going to skip a few steps. If you want to know how to do a step-by-step, -step, go ahead and go back to frequency response or Bode plots, and it will kind of jump you ahead of as far as what we're doing here. So by taking 10 out, it's 10 times 10. So that's going to be 100, and that's going to be S over 10 plus 1. And then this one's going to be 100 times S over 100 plus 1. So all I did was try to go back to the old fundamentals here. So 100 times 100, it's going to be 10K. And I'll tell you what, I'll just make it easy on myself. S over 10 plus 1, and then S over 100 plus 1. Handwriting is a little more sloppier than usual over 10k cancel each other out so it's going to be 1 over s over 10 plus 1 and then s over 100 plus 1. Okay so if we refer to the Bode plot lesson or the frequency response lesson when you have a pole of 10 and a pole of 100 that's when the your Bode plot is going to start sloping downward by 20 decibels per decade. You should see your Bode plot decline and slope at 10 and then you should see it also do it at 100. So at these two points is when you're going to see a major decrease in your Bode plot. Okay, well, we do start seeing it slope down right here by negative 3 dB. And then we start seeing it slope down even more. It has a nice clean slope there, and it slopes down even more, like 40 decibels, which we have 20 here, 20 there, and which per decade, which is correct. So this one looks like it slopes correctly. We'll look at this one also slopes down at 10 and then increases to another 20 decibels per decade. So we have 40 decibels, which is 20 right there, negative 40, negative 60, another decibel. So that's 40 decibels per decade. So these two right here, just based on the slope, look correct. Let's look at this guy. Well, this guy is more than 3 dBs. This one's already neg more than negative 3 decibels at 10. In fact, it's almost at negative 20 decibels at 10 and that's at negative 40 at 100. So this one actually mimics one that's excessively overdamped. So just based on seeing how the frequency response is, this is already at negative 20 decibels at 10. That's not correct. You should start seeing it slope down at 10, not already negative 20 at 10. So this one's overdamped. And this one's under. And this is severely over. Your damping ratio for this one looks like it's just greater than 10. So that's, this one's very overdamped, this one's under. Okay, so now we're between these two Bode plots, just based on what I'm seeing here. And actually, this is very easy at this point. Now, we, like we talked about, we just try to find our starting gain. Well, our starting gain is 20 log of k. Well, k is 1. So, tell you what, make it look a little better. Log of 1, and if you plug and chug that in your calculator, should come out to be a starting gain of 0, which means at 1, you should have a starting gain of 0. So this one has a starting gain of 0. This one has a starting gain of 20. This one has a starting gain of 0. And this one has a starting gain of 0. So three of these have correct starting gains. One does not. So right there, this guy right here is also not it, just because of your starting gain. The slope looks good, 
damping ratio looks good. However, your starting gain is incorrect. So I threw this one in here as a curveball, just keep you refreshed on body plots and frequency response. Uh, these two right here are the main ones to be concerned with as far as this lesson. Over damped and under damped. Since we had a ripple right there, under, this one sloped way too harsh. It's over damped. This one had a nice clean slope because the damping ratio was pretty close to critical. And we had a starting gain of zero. So this right here, D is your answer for our transfer function. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much in this lesson. Uh, if you have any more questions, please let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.